Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, very well. At the end of a, of a, of a pretty intense press tour for Outlander, but it's been a good, good journey. But how nice is it to be doing a press tour? Right. Doing a press tour for a new season of Outlander after yeah. we've had this Droughtlander. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Last night we had a, a, a sort of event here, a live event, and it was great to have people in the audience, right? Yeah. Because we haven't really sort of had that. So, um, yeah, it's been two years since the show has has been aired, uh, but we're now we're now finally back. So do you remember, take me back to day one, season one, on set. Was there anything in your head that said, I'm going to one day be doing press for season six? That's so funny. Now, so that's almost eight years ago, wow. going back. And uh, no, I mean, I actually remember the first day in the car with my driver and we're talking and he was like, how, how long do you think we'll last? You know, and uh, I was like, oh, it, couldn't, it won't last more than like a year, maybe two, two seasons um, but here we are, yeah, season six, and uh, it's been it's been incredible. It goes so fast, though. Why did you think only one or two years? Um, I don't know. It was all just very new to me. You know, I, I'm pretty pretty green. You know, I'd uh, worked as a jobbing actor. You know, done bit parts and the old movie here and there, but nothing really of this scale. And um, I just I had really no idea of what I was getting into. You know, it, it's a phenomenon. You know, the books are such uh, are very popular, mm -hmm. um, and then I think. Uh, yeah, we kind of went in sort of rather naively, but uh, yeah, here we are now. So in the six in the six seasons, what celebrity has slipped into your DM to say they love Outlander? Oh wow, um, uh, I think Rita Wilson I think was uh, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I met her on on a show, and um, you know it's funny. I think the show uh, has been you know very much also a word of mouth thing. You know, mm -hmm. people people do talk about it, but um. Yeah, it's great how popular it is, and especially in America. Actually, I think it seems to be, you know, um, po possibly more popular than other places. So, um, obviously, the fandom is huge. Mm. What is the one strange thing you got in the mail from oh. a fan where you're oh, like, wow. "Wow, they went there." Yeah, I mean, they they are, they are just very invested. They, you know, they they are I'm trying to choose my words. Uh, <laughs> they they're very invested and they they're really supportive. Everything we do, you know, from the charity work we we put our voices to, they they just get behind it. But um, I mean, we've had a variety of really interesting uh, gifts. Um, from I think I received a crate of overripe avocados, uh, homemade peanut butter to a duvet with my face on it to crochet dolls of, of myself. So, yeah, it's um, it's pretty good. So someone gave you a duvet with your face on it. Yes, yeah. I'm not sure if they imagined me sleeping with it, but, um, you know, it's it's good to remind yourself of who you are when <laughs> so, you go to sleep. So who's <laughs> sleeping with that duvet right now? I think it's still in my trailer, actually, at work. <laughs> so yeah. you are using it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think... I feel like the fan would want the duvet with your face on it, not right. you. Right. They should have given me a duvet with their faces on it. Right. But, um, yeah, <laughs> no, they, they're they just so generous. And uh, as I said, you know, we've received a, a lot of gifts, you know, over the years. But but it's more, more so the charity work that we do. You know, I have My Peak Challenge, which is my charity fundraiser. And they, Tell me about they've that. just got behind it. Yeah, it's, um, it's basically a fitness platform. Um, we have uh, daily workouts. We have mindfulness, yoga. Um, nutrition, but uh, whilst you're sort of helping yourself, you're also helping others. We we donate fifty percent of all proceeds to charity, and we've raised over six million dollars now. Um, every year, we choose a different charity partner to work with. Um, but ultimately, it's it's about our peakers, as we call mm -hmm. them, our, our subscribers, um, and they really have gone. You know, they've really banded together, made their own community, um, and we've had had them. You know, create friendships, find mm. you know new skills. You know, fitness. Um, it's it's just been an incredible journey with them. So let's talk about fitness. Obviously, you have to stay in shape. But when right. is, when do you get to not have to worry about that and say, you know what, I'm just gonna eat what I want. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep in. Right. Yeah. I think. Uh, well, I think when we're on a press tour, I think you know it pretty much goes out the window. But yeah. Um, uh, you know, when you're when you're working, obviously it's hard, and you have to you know have quite a, a strict uh, regime. But um, you know, it, it's, it's all about balance, isn't it? So, what is your guilt food when you're not? Oh, worried, when I'm not. When you're not worrying um, about working out. Wow, God, I love coming to America. So <laughs> the food here's so good. And I, I recently was in New York, and I mean, they're they're some of the best the best restaurants. But uh, 
I did a stint with Drew Barrymore recently, and we were eating bagels, and mm-hmm. that was that was pretty much a dream come true. And then New York bagels. Oh my God! I'm so from good. New York, oh, so well, that's the only place you could get real bagels. I wanted to try them all, and we really did. We really did. But the flat one, interesting. I've never had that one before. But that's oh, the uh, the bagel flats. Mm. Yeah. See, when you grow up in New York, when I. I'm of an age. We didn't have bagel flats. We didn't have all these fancy bagels. Like when right. people are like, I like a blueberry bagel. I'm like, that's all not right. a, that's not that's a bagel. Not that's a, a bagel. muffin. You want to keep it classic though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I will. I'll go crazy and get an everything bagel. Mm. And some cream cheese. Oh, stop! You're making me hungry now. And some lox. Yeah. Do you like lox? I love lox. You know, capers. Maybe a little bit of lemon. Okay. Um, but yeah, nothing too fancy. Are you an ice cream guy? Um. I have to admit, I'm I'm not really. I think mm-hmm. I'm more of a savory guy. Okay. Yeah. So I also had some great Italian while I was there. That mm. was good. Uh, New York pizza? Did you have New York pizza? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, pizza, loads of truffle, everything, whatever. Truffle, but gross. I mean, come on. I'm, truffle, I'm, I'm re- no. I'm ready to try it all. Truffle, no. Truffle, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I, I hate mushrooms. Oh, I really? I hate mushrooms. Really? The smell of mushrooms cooking make me hurl. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a shame. I know. Yeah. People and my husband and I went pretty much pescatarian during right. the pandemic. Right. And it's really hard to find stuff that doesn't involve mushrooms. Mushrooms. That's interesting. I I grew up a pescatarian, a sort of vegetarian pescatarian. Mm-hmm. Didn't start eating meat until I came to America when I was twenty four. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I might go back to it one day. So I'm what sure. made you start eating meat when you came to America? It was it, <laughs> all these delicious burgers and food. But no, it was actually I was at the time I was auditioning for Superman and I had a trainer and they're like, you need to get bigger. You know, you need to be able to fill out the cape. And uh, so, yeah, I just got a trainer and he was like, eat more protein. And <laughs> um, and actually, interestingly, I, I remember the first time I had, I think it was chicken or something. When I was, and I just suddenly was like, oh, my God, I have all this energy and I don't mm. feel hungry all the time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but it, I don't know. It, it, yeah, I just wasn't probably eating very healthily at, at the time. And this was Superman the movie or Superman mm. TV show? Uh, the movie, yeah. It was the Brandon Routh one. Uh, Brian Singer. It was yeah, way way back then. How long did how long did you get into the process? I had a, a number of auditions and met the producers, and we never like screen tested or anything. But I think it was the, sort of the beginning of this sort of uh, of me kind of coming to America, I guess, and mm-hmm. the audition processes. And um, and I realized, you know, I needed to change my body shape uh, for the sort of roles that I was going up for. Is a superhero in your future? Who do you want to play? Who's the superhero? Uh, I'd love to. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, you know, I'm excited about the new Batman movie. I think Mm -hmm. that looks fantastic. I think the other superhero movies kind of lost their way a bit. They've become, I think, a little too mm, obese Mm -hmm. in a way, you know. But but anything character-based, I mean, Batman's a great one because he's not a superhero. He's just an interesting character. Right. Um, But something, yeah, something with a, a, a good backstory. You see yourself in that Batman cowl. You have the jawline. You have uh, it. It'll well, work. It'll work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> get back. Get back on that treadmill. But um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I talked about it. But I actually played Batman years ago and Bruce Wayne in a in a in a stage version, a sort of Cirque Cirque du Soleil uh, style. And then we toured all around the world, and um, that was that was cool. We played the Staples Center. We played uh, <laughs> Vegas. It was great. I remember years ago I did a story for Entertainment Weekly. Mm-hmm. And they were doing a Batman. They were putting together a Batman musical for Broadway, and never really? nothing ever came from it. That's right, right. because we were on. We were doing our show, and the Spider Man musical right. came out, and I was desperate to see that. Um, but yeah, singing Batman, I'm not sure it'd work. Are you a singer? No, not really. However, go ahead. I what, no, I'm not going to break <laughs> into song right now. But um, but I just I did a movie uh, this last year, and it should be coming out. Sometime this year with Celine Dion. Yeah, that's right? on my list. That right. is on. My so list. come on, you gotta you gotta belt out a little bit now and then in the shower. So the movie is tech text to you. Text for you. Yeah. Text for you. Yeah. Celine Dion. Mm-hmm. What? Were, wh- where does she play in the story with right. your character? Tell me yeah. everything and anything. Yeah. Um, uh, she is playing herself. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think it's her acting debut. I, I don't think she's been in a movie before, but she uh, she's wonderful. She plays herself. She's supplying a lot of the music for the movie, um, and she's just such an incredible human being, and she's very funny. 
She is. She's yeah, very, very funny. Very funny. Yeah. yeah, and and very hardworking. Um, and it's essentially it's about uh, a woman who loses her partner, and while she's mourning for him, she continues to text him, uh, and unbeknownst to her, the the phone number of her ex uh, boyfriend gets given to someone else, uh, my character, who then falls for this this anonymous text. And that's Priyank Priyanka. Priyanka Chopra, Chopra, who I have to say is is honestly one of the nicest, most <laughs> yeah. incredible people I've ever met. She's a brilliant actress and uh, and a very good friend. So tell me about Celine Dion. Where, where does she play in the story? Is she one of your love interests? Uh, we'll have to watch it and find out. But yeah, she's she's herself. And um, and as I said, she pl supplies a lot of the music as well. So. Do you have a favorite Celine Dion song? <sighs> <laughs> it's 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 really hard. I think she, I think I believe she's written a new one for the for the movie, and that's I think I, I'm don't hold me to that. I don't want to <laughs> trouble here, but I think she has. Um, so that's what I'm excited about. Did you sing with her? I can't possibly say. You can't possibly yeah. say, but if you did get to sing with Celine you did. Dion, that's pretty effing major. Yeah, or or. Embarrassing or, or embarrassing, because <laughs> I don't consider myself a singer <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. yeah. So let's take it back to Outlander. You had a film during the pandemic, obviously. Season yes. Six. Yeah. What was it like doing? You know, you have these huge group scenes, mm -hmm. which have their own, you know, uh, concerns during a pandemic. Yeah. Then you have really, really intimate scenes that have their concerns. <clears throat> what was it like, sort of, going from you know a, a show that has so many people involved, there's no pandemic, mm. to all of a sudden, mm. everyone is doing, you know, COVID protocols. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the reason we were delayed so long. Uh, right. Other shows sort of found a way around it, but they had to make concessions, um, and we didn't want to. You know, we wanted the scale of our show to remain the same, um, and so therefore it did take us longer to sort of work out a system of, of keeping everyone safe. We, we got a testing center at the studio, everyone was tested, had all these different bubbles, different protocols, um, and and ultimately, yeah, I mean, I think we managed it. You know, I don't think we had any cases um, That's on the, on the shooting crew. Right. I think uh, I think on the fringes there were, but I think yeah, I mean, they they worked really hard at it, um, and I know a lot of the budget went went on you know uh, keeping everyone safe. But uh, yeah, I'm just really pleased that we managed to eventually find a way back. You know, it's uh, it is a big show. Um, and of course, you know, people do get nervous, uh, especially at that time when we were really at the height of the pandemic and the lockdown in the UK. Um, but to be honest, once you get back into the swing of things and you get back on set, you kind of fall back into those, mm. those friendships and relationships. So what, what are Jamie's big, con they're the two big concerns. You have Tom mm -hmm. and then you have the American revolution. Yeah. Which is the bigger worry, which makes... Jamie more worried. Well, not only that, you know, Jamie's got, you know, the Tom Christie of it all, <clears throat> yeah. which is, you know, this sort of power struggle between the two, and he's trying to control him. Um, but also the the war of independence fast approaching. Jamie knows he's on the wrong side. He's with the the crown, the British. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows that's going to be the losing side. Um, not only that, he's been given uh, the job of becoming a, an Indian agent. The go between. Um, the local Cherokee tribe, and he doesn't know which side they're going to be on. So mm. they could become enemies or they could become allies. And he's got Claire that he's concerned about because she's been uh, through this horrific assault at the end of last season. So, yeah, he's got uh, – what else do you want to pile right. on top of him? Right. I mean, he really has uh, a lot of concerns. And what, let's talk about Claire and how does Jamie help her heal? Yeah, he, so – He's been through something similar, and I think yeah. um, he's aware of what she's been through. Like, he wants to give her space. He knows, he checks in with her. He knows that, that when she's ready, you know, she'll talk about it. Um, but unbeknownst to him, she actually keeps a secret from him. And I think it's probably the first time that they've never really, well, they've, they've had a secret kept from each other. Mm. Um, she starts to self-medicate, uh, and it does become, you know, uh, quite a, uh, a big gap between them, um, which you'll see them resolve later in the season. So talk about, obviously the show deals a lot with trauma. Mm. How much discussion goes on off camera mm. about really sort of 
obviously portraying it in a sensitive way, but yeah. also you have to be entertaining. Yeah. And then you don't want to, you know, God forbid someone has gone through trauma in their life. Yeah. You don't want to re-traumatize them yeah. during shooting. So how much sort of, is it is it a sensitivity training that goes on? How, yeah. does, it, how does that work? A lot of discussions, you know, and I think, because there, there are some pretty big issues in Outlander, you know, there's always something happening. And yeah, we don't ever want to, um, belittle that or so we do want to uh, approach it very sensitively and um, you know Jamie's trauma similar in a sense but everyone's different everyone reacts to something in a different way and um, I know especially this season um, we, we sat down and talked a lot with the writers and, and Katrina especially for uh, talking about how her PTSD is triggered uh, and how we portray that you know it, it, Eight years ago, when we were shooting, you know, Jamie's trauma or Jamie's assault, um, it was a very different world. So we showed more of it. But now, mm -hmm. this time, um, we really wanted to do something more uh, abstract, but still get into the the mindset of of the victim. Was the discussion like, you know, what we can't show as much anymore? Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think you know, audiences of desires <clears throat> or their um, tolerance for these kind of things have changed over the years. Um, but yeah, we, we absolutely, we sat down a lot, uh, and really discussed it with, you know, all the, all the writers and the execs as well. I think, um, you know, being producers now on the show, we have a responsibility as well. What in the six years, what was the toughest scene for you to shoot? I mean, it has to be, you know, going back to season one, the, uh, the Jamie's uh, rape and assault, uh, it was pretty graphic. Um, and at the time, you know, you, you just get in there and you do it right and you and it's as an actor it's challenging and actually we love a challenge i do you know mm -hmm. i want to go to some dark places but it was it was pretty tough to to shoot it was a pretty intensive um week i think it was what did you do to sort of are you someone who could go home and say okay that was work i could cut it off or is it something you bring home with you and you need to figure out how do i leave that darkness behind mm. Mm. um I think I'm pretty good at switching off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually, at that time, it, it was just a very sort of strange uh, place, and I was because I had so many prosthetics and so much makeup. You know, I was having super early calls, like four a.m. call, wow. and wouldn't be finished till you know seven or eight in the evening. So I was staying in a very small uh, hotel next to the studio. Um, so it almost became like this weird little prison and I just, so I literally was just in it the whole time and um, I do remember it just being very, very intense. Um, but it was also, you know, towards the end of the season. So after that, I think I, I did take some time out and go get up into the highlands of Scotland and sort of escape. Wow. Um, let's talk about Men and Kilts. When are you, oh, yeah. when are you releasing your own line of kilts? <laughs> uh, I have my own tartan I created. Yeah, the Sassnach tartan. It's uh it's beautiful. It's sort of gray, gray, black tartan. But um, you know, Men in Kilts has been brilliant. I it was a, a sort of a passion project of mine. I created mm -hmm. it um, over a number of weekends, shot the promo footage, and then took that to Stars and Sony. And they, fortunately, they picked it up. And we uh, we just finished season two in New Zealand. I just got back what two weeks ago, um, something like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's bigger, bolder, and I don't know, breezier than, than season breezier, one. Breezier, really, right, kilts, right, breezier. Right. Yeah, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> that might uh, be the tagline. Yeah. Come That's on, a good you, one. you do have to release your own line of kilts. I mean, it makes sense, no? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we've, I've actually, you know, I have my own tartan and we have done a number of accessories. We've done some, right. some bags and um, hip loss and things, but um, I, and I have a, a couple of kilts in my tartan, but uh, I mean, people are welcome to, 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 to make them, to buy them. <laughs> we'll have to get you one in one. I I would wear a kilt. You should. You should. It's very liberating. Mm -hmm. uh, Is it? And it feels great. Yeah. So forgive my ignorance on kilt wearing. Mm -hmm. When you Do you go commando in a kilt? Of course, or? yes. It's, I mean, the true Scotsman, yes. Yeah. You just got to be very careful when sitting down. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Isn't yeah. that dangerous? It is. It is dangerous. But, uh, I mean, that's half the thrill of it. But, um, no, I mean, it is the traditional way. But, uh it's um, there's a lot of material there as well, so don't worry. Your, your modesty <laughs> will be well protected. Um, and I know you know you before season two, you had talked a lot about wanting season two to be in New Zealand. So what's the next? Mm. What's the next adventure? Where where do you want to go? Would love to do another season. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, we'll have to speak to 
Atlantis stars and Sony about it. But um, I mean, there are so many because the, the reason we went to New Zealand is because there is a, a strong Scottish connection or the, the, the immigrants that went to New Zealand um, and settled there. Uh, but also my co-star Graham is, is also from New Zealand. But it, it just seemed like a natural progression. But um, yeah, we've, I've got some ideas and I've, I have pitched them uh, to, uh, to the guys at Stars. So we'll see what happens. You don't want to tell me, do you? Well, we could go anywhere, really. You, you could. Know, so where? Like what? What are? You, give me I mean, three top choices. I would. I would love to go to Asia. Um, Japan would be really interesting. Have a, a really. Um, go up. Their whiskey scene is really interesting. But there's a lot of similarities between. I don't know these sort of warrior nations and the Highlanders of Scotland. Mm. Um, I would love to go to India. Um, and even America would be, uh, you know, would be uh, really interesting because, of course, you know, built upon well, modern America is built upon a lot of immigrants. Men in kilts in New York City eating bagels. Oh come on! I mean, that's a must, isn't it? <sighs> no, you know what you got to do? You got to find like a baker who can make a bagel in your tartan. Yes, yes. I wonder how many bagels you can fit in your sporran as well. Your what? Your sporran. It's the so the thing <laughs> you. <laughs> But <laughs> it's this. Uh, you might have seen it's. Um, it's essentially a. It's a bit of a man bag, really. Right. Uh, but you wear it around your waist, and it, it used to be worn at the side. Um, but it's like a fanny pack. Uh, yes. Yes. A but much pack. more masculine. But ve- way more masculine. You can yes. have different sizes, and you can have them covered in different materials. Or, um, but yeah, but they're very handy actually, because you don't have any pockets in a kilt. So. And it's called a spore. It's called a sporran. How many vehicles could fit into your sporran? Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty handy to put your your mobile phone in as well. Um, now let's uh, let's talk about Everest. Mm. What kind of training do you have to do? When does that start shooting? Well, where are we at? Unfortunately, uh, it has been delayed, and I'm not I'm not sure when we're we're going to be shooting mm-hmm. it. Um, hopefully, um, it'll happen. Um, we we were supposed to be shooting about now, um, but just with scheduling and, and COVID as well, it's a, right. it's a big movie, but i um, love to work with Doug Lyman. He's uh, an he's incredible, so yeah, he's such a great filmmaker. And, um, and what? of course, uh, you know, I've been chatting a lot with Ewan as well, and he's a good guy. So I, I did start um, a bunch of like uh, climbing training because my character, George Finch, is, uh, you know, was an alpine climber and uh, for freestyler. He's, arguably the best climber of his generation mm. um, so yeah it was fun I would have to slim down a lot as well but um, we'll see have you watched and I'm going to ask my cameraman what's the movie again that we love the the, the, what is it The Alpinist yeah The Alpinist, the Alpinist. <gasps> you gotta watch it it's, it's a insane. doc about um, a f- how do you well, how do you phrase it like they're a free climber yeah this guy no you're talking free solo are you the yeah. guy, he climbs up uh, El Cap. Well, it's alpine climbing. But it's this is alpine climbing. There's free ah, solo. Ah. This guy takes it to a to, to whole not, other Wow. Way. Okay, I'll check it it's, out. It's, there's no ropes, nothing. Yeah. And he's doing these cliffs and these ice, pat, like, glacial. It's, mm. yeah, you wow. have to check it out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? And these, and... You know, at the time, you know, George and, and uh, George Mallory as well and George Finch, they, they went up, you know, it was, uh, it was you know, the uh, 1920s. Yeah. Um, and they just, they had nothing. You know, they literally were going into the unknown. And, you know, at, at first, their first few attempts were without oxygen. And actually, George Finch was the one that, you know, helped develop that system. He also uh, he created the, uh, the down jacket that we all now wear. Really? Before, they were going up in tweed coats and things. Right. And he was like, no, this is right. And actually, the the geographical society, you know, everyone, they, they all laughed at him. They thought he was insane. Mm. So let's go back again to your, you, you're starting off in the business. You're trying to be Superman. You're playing Batman. <laughs> right. Touring as Batman. And now when you look online, there's so much calls for you to be the next James Bond. Oh, What does that well, feel like? Um, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I think every British actor that's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's alive right now has, has been thrown into a pot. Uh, and uh, I mean, look, it's, it's an icon. It's one of the hugest franchises there are. And um, I loved, I love uh, the last one that, that they did. Um, super, super great journey for, for Daniel Craig to go on. But I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who, who knows who they're looking at? But um, I did I did audition for Bond years ago. Bond and Superman. Right. Yeah. Like 
yeah, you could am amalgamate the two and have like a sort yeah, of flying band with a cape, band with a cape, with a kilt, a kilt, and a cape, <laughs> a kilt. and a, what's the other thing? The sporin. and a sporin, yeah, yeah. Keep ba his band super sporin. Keep his Walter PPK in there, couldn't we? Or a martini shaker. I don't know, martini shaker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, now some fun questions. What okay. mo movie poster did you have on your wall when you were a kid? Oh. Um, I think it's probably Indiana Jones. Yeah. 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 Why? Uh, wh why? Why not? I mean, it, <laughs> like I used, I grew up. Um, it, it always seemed to be on at, at Christmas, the Indiana Jones movies on television, and um, I love them. They're they're brilliant. You know, he's such a great character. They were fun, uh, and and the Last Crusade is just brilliant. I mean, you've got Sean Connery. You've got. Um, Speaking of kilts. Yeah, speaking of Scots <laughs> and the kilts. Uh, it's such a great, great movie. Um, tell me about the worst audition you ever went on. Oh, so many. So many. Oh, my God. I have so many memories when I come around Los Angeles. And like, <laughs> I think the worst, uh, just embarrassing. Um, I, I was auditioning for Jumanji, uh, mm -hmm. and I just landed in, in Los Angeles. I think I was early 20s and really jet-lagged, uh, and they wanted me to to audition for this astronaut in American accent and I just didn't know where I was and what I was doing and <laughs> I was just it was just you know when you just want the floor to swallow you up <laughs> what, how do you audition to be an do they put you in an astronaut I don't know suit, or how do you like play an astronaut you know you're supposed to in like an audition yeah but I, I also because I at the time I thought you know they want an American actor for this I st started creating this story about how I was part Canadian so that's where my <laughs> accent comes from and Oh, I got myself in so much trouble because they started asking me, oh, really, where, where from? Where in Canada are you from? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a little Scottish place. <laughs> um, favorite food on the crafts table? Uh, favorite food on the crafts table? I mean, uh, the Outlander craft has, has, been, uh, has been a process, and we finally got there. Um, what do you mean by a process? Well, when we first started, there wasn't a craft. Uh, it, was, it was basically a, a sort of grocery bag of, of of you know moist biscuits that, sort of <laughs> that someone just carried around and there you go but uh, we've now actually do have you know like a great craft service now and they're, they're very creative it's so hard you're in, you're in the highlands of scotland and it's snowing or rain and you know in the mud mm -hmm. and yet we do still manage to get you know strong coffee and and i don't know a protein bar well mr sam this was great thank you so thank much thank you so I'm much glad we finally got to I was trying to recall. I think we chatted once on a red carpet Possibly. a long time ago. Yeah. I want to say it was a BAFTA pre globe Probably. event, maybe. Right. But I'm glad we got to really, oh, really chat. So nice. Thanks and I can't wait me. to hear your singing with Celine Dion. Oh, God. Yeah. It's going to be a great movie. I'm excited. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much.